Okay, so Beatrice Gutierrez Miller. Huh. Get ready to have some of your assumptions challenged. This is not your typical first lady deep dive. Not even close. I mean, the fact that she avoids that label altogether says a lot. Right. Like, yeah. that really jumped out at me. It's interesting. The article we're diving into today is from Pletora Network, you know, that site all about Latin American creativity. Oh, yeah. I've seen their stuff. Super interesting perspective. Exactly. And it's cool because they're coming at this not from, like, a political angle, but more like, who is this woman as a creative force? Yeah. Because she's a journalist, a writer, a researcher. And in Mexico, that first lady role, it's traditionally very, well, it's a very specific box, you know? Right. Like a very public very traditional kind of thing. Exactly. So for her to sidestep that, it's like she's saying, I'm not here to fit your mold. I'm carving my own path. And you can really see that in her background, even before the whole political stage. I mean, she didn't exactly take the straight and narrow to becoming a writer. No kidding. Communication studies first, then a master's in Ibero-American literature, and then, boom, a doctorate in literary theory. That's not the usual trajectory. It makes you wonder what was going on in her head. You know, like, what connects all those dots? I think it speaks to this real fascination with how stories work, how they reflect history, culture. It's like she needed to understand the mechanics of it all before crafting her own narratives. And her novels are not just fluff. You know, the article mentioned her first one, Larga Vida al Sol, Long Live the Sun, came out back in 2011. What's the deal with that one? What kind of stories is she drawn to? Oh, that one's a perfect example. It's historical fiction set in 16th century Mexico. So she's dealing with colonialism, indigenous cultures, the whole collision of worlds. It's heavy stuff. Wow. So she's going deep right from the start. But it's not just about digging into the past for her, right? The Platora Network article really emphasized her work now leading the Council for the Preservation of Mexican History and Culture. And that's where it gets even more interesting. She's not content with just studying history. She wants to make it come alive, make it matter to people today. Okay, but what does that look like in action? Like, why should people care about preserving history anyway? That's the question, right? It's easy to dismiss it as dusty textbooks and all that, but Gutierrez Miller, she gets that our collective memory, the stories we tell about the past, they shape us in the present. It's not just about the dates and the names. It's about how it all still affects us today. Exactly. It's about making sure that history is accessible to everyone, not just academics tucked away in some ivory tower. And that actually loops back to Platora Network's whole thing with creativity. It's like she's taking these potentially dry topics and making them relevant, exciting even. And that's what makes her so fascinating, don't you think? She's not afraid to shake things up, even when it comes to something as established as history. It's like she's found this whole other dimension to it, this whole other way to connect people to the past. OK, now you got to tell me more. What's this other dimension? Music. Music. See, that's not the first thing that comes to mind when I think about preserving history. You know? Yeah, right. But that's what's so cool about it. Platora Network was going on about how she's using music to bring history to life in this whole new way. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more about this. So a big part of it has been her work rediscovering and promoting historical Mexican music, especially stuff from the 19th and early 20th centuries. You know, those kind of forgotten melodies hidden away in archives. Yeah. She's bringing those back into the light. Like a musical archaeologist or something. Yes, but she doesn't stop there. She's worked with musicians and orchestras to actually perform and record these pieces, making them accessible to a modern audience. Wow, that's amazing. It's one thing to read about history, but to actually hear music from another time period, that's yeah. going to be a whole other level of immersive, you know? Totally. Yeah. And she's not afraid to get creative with it either. Like, they'll incorporate traditional Mexican instruments, blend genres. It creates this sound that's both historical and totally fresh at the same time. Love that. Honoring the past while also making it relevant to today. Okay, so we've got her rejecting this traditional first lady role. We've got her passion for making history accessible and now this whole musical element. Is there anything Beatrice Gutierrez Miller doesn't do? Right. Well, the article from Pletora Network also highlighted her work as an advocate for social justice and equality. Oh, interesting. And they made this point that it's not separate from her love of history and culture, but totally intertwined with it. Yeah, that makes sense. When you think about it, history is full of stories about injustice and inequality. So if, if you're really paying attention to the past. Exactly. It seeps into everything. And you see it reflected in all her work. 
Like how? Well, take her novels, for example. They often feature characters from marginalized backgrounds, giving a voice to those who are often left out of the traditional historical narratives. It's like she's using fiction to reframe history, to show us a more inclusive picture of the past. Exactly. And it makes us think critically about the present, too. Because if those voices were marginalized then, how are they still being marginalized today? Whoa. That's a heavy question. But it's not just in her writing, right? What about her work with indigenous communities? Platora Network mentioned that too. Oh, absolutely. That's huge for her. She's a fierce advocate for the rights of indigenous peoples, especially when it comes to preserving their languages and cultures, you know, things that are often at risk of being lost. Right. Like she sees that as a vital part of preserving Mexican history as a whole. A hundred percent. It's about recognizing the true diversity of Mexican identity, all those different voices and perspectives that make it so rich. And giving them a platform to be heard which is something she's clearly passionate about. She gets that when we lose those voices, when we allow these languages and cultures to disappear, we lose a part of ourselves. We lose a part of history. And that's something she's fighting to prevent. I'm telling you, every time I think we've covered it all, there's another layer to her work. Right. So to our listener who's just getting to know Beatrice Gutierrez Miller now, sure. what are the big takeaways? What makes her someone worth knowing about? Well, I think she embodies this idea that knowledge is power. Her whole life has been about seeking knowledge, pushing boundaries, and then using that knowledge to make a real difference in the world. Like a lifelong learner who inspires others to do the same. Exactly. And then there's the way she challenges us to rethink our whole relationship with history. It's not just some dusty old thing of the past. It's alive, it's relevant, and it has the power to shape who we are today. It's about learning from the past both the guy and the bad, and then using that knowledge to create a better future. Yes. And she doesn't shy away from those tough conversations about social justice, about equality. She's using her position to advocate for marginalized communities, to make their voices heard, to fight for a more just and equitable world. Honestly, it's pretty inspiring. It makes you think about what kind of impact you want to have on the world. It really does. And speaking of impact, we haven't even touched on her work with literature and education literature and education huh okay yeah i'm definitely sensing a theme here with wow. beatrice gutierrez miller it's all about taking these things these important things and just making them accessible bringing them to life totally and that's exactly what pletora network was getting at they highlighted her dedication to fostering a genuine love of learning and it makes sense when you think about it, right? It goes hand in hand with her work preserving history and culture. She believes everyone should have access to the power of literature, you know, that transformative power. That's interesting you say that because, you know, when I think literature, I think novels, poetry, plays, all that. But I'm guessing she takes a bit of a broader view. Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of her major projects has been promoting reading and literacy, and not just for kids, but across all ages. Yeah. But here's what I find really fascinating. Her focus on making Mexican literature more widely available, especially works by women and indigenous authors. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And it makes perfect sense, too, with her whole mission of making sure those voices are heard. It's one thing to, you know, preserve history, preserve culture, but it's another thing entirely to put those stories directly into people's hands. Exactly. And get this, she's not just focused on readers in Mexico. Like she's been instrumental in promoting translations of Mexican literature into other languages so that people around the world can experience these stories. That's incredible. So she's advocating for social justice, preserving history, championing music, promoting literature. Seriously, is there anything this woman can't do? Right. I think what's so amazing about someone like Beatrice Gutierrez Muller is that she shows us that, you know, the possibilities are endless when you're passionate about knowledge, about creativity and about making a difference in the world. No, I'm with you. It's really inspiring. It kind of makes you wonder what more could she possibly accomplish? What's next? Who knows? But I think one thing's for sure. Whatever she takes on, it's going to be thoughtful, impactful and unforgettable. Well said. You know, I have to say, after this deep dive, I feel like we've barely scratched the surface of who Beatrice Gutierrez Miller really is. I mean, she is so much more than just a first lady. She's a scholar. She's an artist and advocate, a true inspiration. Couldn't agree more. She's a reminder that one person can make a difference, you know? Yeah. And that knowledge and compassion, those things can be real forces for positive change. Absolutely. So to everyone listening, we leave you with this. What will your deep dive be? What story will you uncover? What passion will you pursue? Until next time. Keep those questions coming and keep diving deep.